in that I want to just illustrate a little bit how uh, much effort is required to build these kinds of tools. So I mentioned that we've done a lot of work um, collecting some really large and unique data sets. There's a lot of complexity behind that. That also takes a lot of expertise. So we've been working on this for the entire time that I've been at Veric, most of eight years. And we've hired a lot of PhD level experts in this area and we filed quite a few patents around this to protect this kind of unique technology. It takes a lot of work. Um, we also have consulted with a lot of experts. So the PDF specification, for example, is, is authored by an international committee. And we actually went out and met with that committee and we, we uh, retained a number of them as, as consultants and ran our approach past them and got good feedback. Uh, so it takes a lot of work. This is not the kind of thing that your kind of average insurance company or um, uh, independent uh, you know, group is gonna be able to very easily do. So um, with that, I'm gonna dive in and show you a couple of things. Um, you should be able to see my web browser. Let me know if that's not the case. Um, so the first of the two I want to show is uh, what I call our pixel manipulation demo. So this is a machine learning based approach that is looking at, at the image itself. So looking at the pixels of an image to determine whether there's evidence that um, that image was modified after it was captured. So I'm going to just go ahead and select an image um, to use for the demo. Uh, use this one, sure. Um, so this is an, an image that we took and we, we it was from a real claim. Uh, we sent uh, after anonymizing it, right? And make sure we had the right legal permissions and contractual you know, uh, uh, situation in place that allows us to use this for R&D. We sent this image off to freelance graphic design experts around the world. And we paid them to create, uh, I will say more or less realistic <laughs> uh, manipulations to the images that we could then use to test whether our algorithms could capture them. So in this case, this, this damage, right, the shingle damage was introduced digitally using a software like Photoshop. And what our algorithm does is two things. So one, it gives us back a score that indicates how likely it is that, that manipulation occurred on a zero to 100 scale. So we're about 92% confident that a manipulation occurred in this image. And then it also, secondarily, gives us these red uh, bounding boxes that gives us where within the image the algorithm thinks it sees those changes that were made. So you can imagine if you have this, uh, this gives you a great starting point um, to be able to investigate the claim. And we're definitely not saying we're going to replace the, the, the person in the loop. We're still going to need an, a, a, you know, a well-trained um, SIU professional who can take a look at this and ask the right kind of questions and conduct the investigation. Uh, but this is a great lead um, for that person. Um, let's look at a couple more. I've looked at roofs already, so let's look at this one. So this would be like a, a water claim on the property side. And again, we've got a very high score that the manipulation is detected. And we can see where within the image. So some of the staining on the wall and on the floor um, seems to have been exaggerated or added in digitally. Let's do one more. Let's do maybe one on the auto side of this one. Uh, so here's a, a photo of a vehicle. Again, very likely to have been manipulated. So the damage here on the windscreen or windshield and to the front of the vehicle uh, may have been added in digitally. In fact, they, I know that they were in this case. Um, so again, good, good starting point for some question an, uh, answering. Uh, interestingly, when, when these algorithms, I think I mentioned this earlier in the presentation, but these algorithms are not looking at these photos in the way that a person would. The, the algorithm doesn't even know this is a car, right? It's not looking at the, the color of the trees in the background. It's not seeing uh, the photo the way that you would. What it's looking at is invisible noise signatures that are left behind by a particular camera. And it's looking for situations where um, those noise signatures don't look authentic. So for example, um, if someone took some pixels from, from a photo of another damaged vehicle and they copied and kind of pasted that over top of this one and then kind of feathered it in and made it look real, um, we, our algorithm is able to identify that it looks like there are pixels from two different source devices that are present in the same image. And that's not what we'd expect in an authentic image. So it's quite a robust uh, way to look for uh, non-authentic images. 